Hey there, welcome back to the channel. We are outside of the studio today, out in nature. I thought this was the best venue to truly appreciate the dial of the watch that we are going to talk about today. This is a new Omega Speedmaster Professional Moon Watch with a white dial. This is a bit of a surprising release this year. This is a new watch built in the same frame as the new Speedmaster that we got back in 2021. There's a few things that made this watch really special that are retained here in the white dial version. And the new white dial on this watch really adds something special to the platform without compromising the DNA of the Moon Watch that we all know and love. When the new Speedmaster was released in 2021, uh, they brought with it a new caliber, the 3861 hand-wound chronograph movement. This replaced the long-running 1861 caliber. Yes, it still uses a cam and lever system for the chronograph, but it did get a big upgrade over in the escapement. Yes, this watch uses a coaxial escapement, and it has a silicon balance spring and a free-sprung adjustable mass balance. This is also a master chronometer, meaning it will keep time to zero to plus five seconds per day. In my experience with these watches, uh, they've been well inside of that. These are seriously impressive movements when it comes to accuracy. Now this watch launched in two different forms back in 2021, with a sapphire crystal and exhibition case back, and one with an acrylic crystal and a closed case back. And there's some small differences between the two other than the obvious uh, exhibition case back. The sapphire sandwich variation used an applied polished logo at the top of the dial, and the new bracelet also received uh, polished center link sections uh, within it. And that brings up my favorite component of the new Speedmaster, and that was the new bracelet. This thing has a five millimeter taper to it and it wears beautifully on the wrist. Now, one thing it didn't launch with was a quick adjustment system in the clasp. Now that has been rectified fairly recently and this new white dial Speedmaster does get that quick adjustment system in the clasp uh, and it works quite well. I tend to prefer quick adjustment systems that don't add any bulk or compromise on the design or aesthetic of the clasp uh, on your wrist. And this certainly does that. Uh, now it's just one small adjustment that can be made. Uh, it's about five or six millimeters that you can pull it out. So I would recommend sizing this watch with it fully pushed in so you have the flexibility to pull it out uh, whenever the situation calls for it. Now there's a few interesting details about the new Speedmaster that I really enjoyed and they carry over in a really interesting way here to the white dial. These are both kind of throwback elements to older Speedmaster references. The first of which is the dot over 90 on the tachymeter bezel. Uh, and the second is the stepped dial here. Now on the white dial, this is really pronounced a bit more. It gets a little bit lost on the black dial version of this watch. Uh, and it's the same with the recessed sub dials. Now the shadows created here on the white dial make these things uh, a little bit more pronounced uh, again than you see on the black dial, which I really enjoy. Uh, this is not a flat white dial. There's a slight gloss to it, though I wouldn't really call it glossy. It's somewhere in between satin and matte. It feels a slightly more formal than the black dial. And this watch is only available with the sapphire crystal and exhibition case back and the polished center links and that applied polished logo at 12 o'clock. One thing that this white dial gets right that a lot of other white dials don't is the use of black hour markers and black hands. This creates a highly legible dial experience, uh, much more so than something like the uh, Daytona with a white dial, which uses polished applied hour markers and hands. So the legibility really depends on the environment that you're in. This black on white really keeps a sporty look to the watch overall. And again, it really helps with the legibility. So I'm really happy to see it done this way on this Speedmaster. One thing that you do lose a little bit of in this execution is the loom. Rather than the entire hour markers being loom, like on the black dial, there's just a small application of loom at the end of each hour marker. Now, when thinking about this watch against something like the Rolex Daytona, which is also offered with a white and a black dial, uh, the differences are very pronounced between the two brands and, and how they handle their very historic chronographs. Now, side by side, the Daytona actually doesn't look all that smaller, even though it is a 40 millimeter watch and the Speedmaster is, of course, a 42 millimeter watch. Now, I've talked a lot about how those numbers for the Speedmaster aren't quite as scary as they might sound. This watch wears a little bit smaller than you might imagine. But again, next to the Daytona, I think the differences are stark. The Daytona presents as a bit more of a premium watch and at nearly double the price I would say it is. However the Speedmaster feels a lot more approachable and captures on a lot of the same aesthetic components that I really love about the Daytona uh, just in a very different way of course. This has that twisted lug and that timeless Speedmaster design. I'm really happy that Omega did not do the black infill on the registers here. This is a very clean and again highly legible dial here and it also separates it a bit further from watches like the Daytona. 
This watch feels a bit more wearable than the Daytona, to be perfectly honest with you, and I feel like it's a watch that would take to some scratches and a bit of a beating a little bit better than that watch. Of course, they both have their own charm and qualities that I really enjoy, and the lack of availability of the Daytona at retail makes it a bit of a non-issue altogether. Still, I think it's an interesting comparison to be made, and perhaps Rolex could even learn a thing or two about how this watch has been executed. I think this is an excellent take on the white dial. At the end of the day, I really love how this watch picks up and retains uh, the classic speed master DNA while presenting it in a new and interesting fashion. This watch is priced from $8,100 and they are not widely available on the market yet, but hopefully they will be in the near future, much as the black dial is now. I'd love to know what you think about this watch, uh, about the Speedmaster in general, and about this white dial execution. What do you think of it next to the black dial Speedmaster, and what do you think of it next to something like the Daytona? Uh, be sure to share your thoughts down below. I'd love to hear from you here. I've got a lot more of my thoughts on this watch now live over at the deeptrack.com. I will put a link to that down below. If you enjoy this content, a like and a share helps out a lot. And if you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. That'll do it for this one. Thanks so much for tuning in. And until next time, take care.